What is going on, YouTube people? Neo Cards and Comics here today to tackle some feedback from the video that I did late last week about let's not forget that the hobby is supposed to be fun. All this nonsense that we do, cards, comics, non-sports cards, Char Lizards, Pikachu Mons, whatever it is, it is supposed to be fun. Do we lose sight of that sometimes? Do we get caught up in the dollars and cents of that sometimes? Yes. And one of the comments that I got on that video, and I got this quite a few times, and it's something you see all over the social sphere, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, IG, whatever. Money has ruined the hobby. Now, the hobby, in this case, could be all those different things that we mentioned. This isn't necessarily exclusive to the sports cards, but that's the general statement that you'll, you will see out there. Money has ruined the hobby. And I'm going to push back on that. I don't think money has ruined the hobby. Money has changed the hobby. That is 100% for sure. Agree. But it, money only ruins the hobby if you let it. If you let money ruin the hobby for you, then it's going to be ruined. But I think it's an, a convenient excuse because people don't like how the hobby has changed. I get it. Some things have gotten more expensive that maybe you used to collect. Stop collecting for a little bit. No one says that you have to be in this 24-7, 365. It is okay to take breaks, step away for a little bit, enjoy what you currently have, refocus, re-energize, and then come back in Six months, a year, two years later. That's always an option. You could go down new avenues. Maybe the thing that you used to like to collect is more expensive or you don't like the way things have changed or whatever. Search out something different or, do, or new to dive into. Maybe you don't like the era that we are in of all the shiny purple pixie fairy dust parallels and uh, fake patches and sticker autos. Don't collect the new stuff. Just go after the old stuff or cherry pick the very specific cards that you like of a particular player or team that you enjoy. I think the problem is, and why people think money has ruined the hobby, is because they feel like they can't keep up anymore. They get FOMO. I think, and this isn't all of it, I think this is part of it. And I'm guilty of some of this too. You know, I have fallen victim to FOMO. I have fallen victim to, oh man, that's a really nice card that someone has. I want one of those for myself. Or I feel like my collection is getting left behind because I don't have as nice a stuff as that person. And I think we all fall prey to this a little bit sometimes, uh, whether we have guards up or not. I think we all kind of can fall a little victim to this. Oh, everyone's ripping Bowman 2023. I feel bad about myself or I feel bad about my collection or I am not a good collector or good hobbyist because I'm not ripping $600 jumbo boxes of 2023 Bowman like everybody else is. Not everybody else is ripping those. Just your social media feed is. And I think as, as much of a benefit as social media has been, to the hobby and to the world in general, there's also obviously a lot of detriments. That's a lot bigger conversation for a different day and probably not the person to talk about it. But hobby specific, I think we all fall victim to that keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Oh, he just got that. Damn, I need to run out and get one of those. Or, oh, they're all ripping that. I need, I, I want to rip some of that. I need to get into a break. I want to experience this like everybody else. And we get caught up in that moment sometimes and want to chase it. And I think, and then that's where people get burned. They overextend, they overreach. They go outside of their boundaries to stretch for something they probably shouldn't be stretching for. Then they get burned on that thing. The value goes down. They bought it for the wrong reasons. And now it's not really as cherished to them as they thought it was initially going to be. Now that they actually have it in hand on their desk, in their case, in their box, whatever, whatever it is. And they feel burned on it. 
the value decreases, the market falls out from underneath it. They fell victim to the pump and dump, whatever it is. Now, now they get mad. Now they get angry. Justifiably so. I could see that. But look in the mirror. Why did you go after that? Did you go after it because you truly wanted it? And if that's the case, then, you know, that stuff happens. Some I, There's been plenty of things that I have bought that I am underwater on and still happy to own because I bought them for the right reasons. Uh, my Le- LeBron refractors, the couple that I have, I bought those not even remotely during the peak of the market. I bought them on what I thought was the downswing. Those are still downswinging. I am way underwater on those. I still enjoy having them. That being said, there are cards and products that I have bought because I got caught up in the FOMO of things and ended up with them in my possession because I got caught up. The bottom fell out. Something happened. Something changed. And now all of a sudden I'm looking at it and going, why'd you buy that? Did you actually really want to own that? Or did you just buy it because everybody else was running and buying it? And I think that's where people get into the mentality of, Money has ruined all this. It only ruins it if you let it. There are plenty of various aspects of the collecting space. At its base level, it's all about we like to acquire and hoard these things and look at them and and, and just have them laying around or on display or in a vault or whatever it is that you like to do with them. But you like to just own things. You like to own physical things at its at its very base level. And money doesn't ruin that. It can make it different. It can make it more challenging. But it shouldn't ruin your overall joy of that hoarder-like mentality of wanting to own these, in this case, you know, little pictures of cardboard men or in a comic book case, expensive paper. We all have different limits, whether it's financially, time, energy, effort, whatever it is. And there are plenty of ways as external factors change to stay within those limits and still enjoy collecting various different things. If something gets more expensive, look at something else. If you're feeling burnout, sit back, enjoy what you have. Maybe reevaluate what you have. Maybe you don't need as many things as you have. Maybe sell some of those things, get money back in your pocket, but then go put to work in the hobby for you. If you feel things are getting out of reach, take a break. It's okay. You don't have to go 24 seven, 365. I think we have all can tell various stories of coming in and out of different collectible phases of even different things. You know, I've gone through phases over my entire life from Marvel cards, the comics, the sports cards, to back in the comics, to back in the sports cards, to in the Magic the Gathering, and then out. And, you know, now I'm in all of them at once, which do not recommend. And then it's cliche to say, but it's absolutely true. Find ways to have the hobby fund the hobby. Sell some stuff like we just talked about. Use the knowledge that you have about whatever it is specifically that you collect to your advantage to potentially use that to earn a little bit of money back somehow. To then be able to take that money that you make back and put it back in to buy the things that you really like. If money has ruined the hobby for you, I would be curious to know how. I I would like to know how in the comments down below how money specifically ruined the hobby for you. And is it that money really ruined it? Or you let money ruin it for you? I think that's the big difference. Did it ruin it or did you let it ruin it? Curious for your thoughts and comments as always. Catch you on the next one. Peace.